y'all. I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate, and we're bringing you another episode of I'm Moving to North Carolina, Now What? So if you haven't bought a home in the last, let's say, five to seven years, this video is absolutely for you. This also can be shared with family and friends who have also not purchased a home in the last five to seven years. Keep in mind, anytime somebody's giving you advice, it's based off of their own experience. So it's really important that you look at the context of time and whether or not the rules that applied then still apply now. So some of the big ones we're gonna talk about today, the first one is finance contingency. So back in 2019, that got removed. So keep in mind, every summer, July 1st, that's when our rule changes typically happen. And there's usually a grace period of like a month, month and a half for folks to implement those changes with efficacy. So the finance contingency, essentially means that if you don't have funding because something has happened, whether your lender messed up, you decided to buy a new truck and now you don't qualify for your loan or the cash offer that you provided, now grandma's not gonna give you the down payment, whatever the case is, if you don't have the money on closing day, you lose all of your deposits, okay? That is not a reason that you can't close anymore, meaning you don't get the opportunity to kind of walk away. This is really a difference, I think, between our state and a lot of other states where that finance contingency is something that physically gets removed. Whereas here, if you don't have the money, you don't have the money, but you're gonna lose those deposits in that interim. So another thing that continuously gets updated, and part of it is in response to just societal changes and things that become more common, is what conveys. So first of all, the term convey means to come with the property. So it stays with the property. So some big ones that I think have thrown people in the last couple of years is like ring doorbells. Those have actually become very commonplace. Um, this can also be a variation off of like CPI security or some other companies that have that camera style doorbell. So keep in mind, if it's nailed, glued, screwed, bolted, or buried in the ground, it typically comes with the property. So that includes a lot of your technology unless it is leased. So you really need to be mindful in removing those things before you list your home or you market it in any way. Another big one that we saw kind of through the COVID years was garage gyms. So if you have something like a pull-up bar, for example, um, if it's attached to the wall and it's seen on a showing, that is not supposed to get removed. So there is this concept that it's personal property because it's your home gym. But the thing is, there are big old bolts that probably have that kind of nailed into the wall and you're gonna rip out part of the sheetrock or even some of the framework and stuff when you remove that. So anything you don't want to kind of be kept by your future buyer, make sure you get rid of it. Um, another thing is contract extension. So there's always been this clause in our contract that if for some reason, and these are for extreme situations like finance stuff or um, there's a, a death or an illness or things like that. So again, extreme. You're allowed to extend the contract without technically getting permission from the other side. So it's a loophole, if you will. It used to be 14 days. So you could say, I can't close for the next two weeks. And unfortunately, the other side, as long as you gave them that good reason, they kind of had to deal with it, which can be a little tricky, especially when you're paying for movers. Well, a couple of years ago, they've now shortened it. So it went from being 14 days to now being seven. That's a huge difference. Um, so just keep that in mind. There is that little buffer there, and it's also really helpful to know that both the buyer and the seller can actually kind of pull that move. So as you're lining things up and expecting money or, you know, thinking you're gonna have to give money, it's always good to be in communication with the other side. Um, the other big one that we haven't seen as much usage of lately is an appraisal addendum. So an appraisal addendum became really common during the COVID market simply because homes were selling so quickly and so substantially over list price that appraisers couldn't keep up. So the market demand was really pushing those prices so quickly and you have to use closed comps for an appraisal that a lot of times buyers would have to kind of go ahead and say, yes, I agree that I'm gonna take this, no matter if it appraises or not, I'm gonna pay the difference on the appraisal. Um, now, I think as things have started to settle, appraisers have a little bit more of a closed comp group that they can rely on and the trends are a little bit more natural versus this like crazy inorganic way of things going on. Um, so just know appraisal addendums, there's still some variations out there, um, but always ask questions when it comes to that and whether or not they're necessary. Um, another thing is fuel tanks. So we do have propane in addition to natural gas lines here. If there's a propane tank, you need to find out if it's leased or owned. 
That was something that got added to the contract very recently in regards to if it's owned, knowing where the level is. Uh, there was actually some uh, courtroom cases where the buyer said, hey, this was a full tank when we went under contract. Now it's completely empty. I feel like the seller has changed the condition of the property and they were actually found to be correct and that's factual. So now there is a documentation way to say that the fuel tank is at wherever the line may be. Another one is our disclosures. This is a very recent one. So in July of 2024, the disclosures that are filled out by the seller got a complete and utter overhaul. So they are now six pages instead of the original four pages. Um, you will see that they are much more user friendly. It used to look like one long thesis statement. It was nuts how it was just everything kind of all globbed together. Now everything's kind of truncated. They have smaller groups where it makes sense. There's an HVAC section and a structural section and an HOA section. And a couple of the things that were added in addition to this was if the seller had knowledge of like the septic tank, has it recently been pumped? Has it been reworked in any type of way? Does it actually exist? Um, or flood zones, that was another big one. And keep in mind, a lot of these changes typically come from problems that have arisen where there's been some kind of dispute and uh, misunderstanding that has occurred. So typically the folks who write our documents are trying to clarify things to make it easier and really look out for the consumer. And then the last thing, and this is probably the biggest one, is buyer agency. So August 17th of 2024, buyer agency has now been amended to where you have to have a buyer agency before you actually get to see a home. So that includes virtual and in person. Person. So you do have to have an agency agreement, a contract to work together before you visit the property. So just keep in mind these changes, if any of these are new since the last time you bought or sold. And if you have any clarifying questions that you need to ask, drop them in the comments below or shoot us a private message. I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate. We'll see you in the next episode.